Asha Bobot is Chief Executive of uh, IT Group EOH. Asha, in many ways, your life over the past 15 years has been very intertwined in, in the EOH story. How did, how did EOH start way back in, in, in the late 90s? Yeah, uh, EOH started in 1998. Uh, yeah, the, the reason for, for starting EOH is really I was kind of bored where I was. And uh, I always had affinity to the world of, of, of system processes, etc. And I thought that was a, a nice opportunity to, to start something. And uh, yeah, the, the customer, the first customer that we had was my employer at the time, which I, I asked and they kindly allowed us to, to start a business with them being the, the first customer. And uh, yeah, and we've grown since then. That customer was PG Bison, and as you say, uh, still your customer today, 15 years later. You started off as 20 staff. You're now well over 6,000. Are you surprised at how this this beast has grown? Yeah, I think uh, I always say nowadays that uh, to start a business, you've got to be naive <laughs> to, to start a business. Uh, if you know what it takes to, 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 to build and grow a business, you probably wouldn't start it. So, of course, we didn't uh, expect the business to, to be this size and to be where, where it is. Having said so, the, the philosophy of the business, the, the value system, the culture of the business, and in essence what the business does is, is what was envisaged. Maybe the, the dimensions of the business were not envisaged to be, to be uh, as such. You did manage to survive the dot-com bubble bursting shortly after listing. It was uh, an interesting time, I'm sure, back then where valuations went straight through the stratosphere and then plummeted back down to earth. How have you managed to, to survive all these ups and downs? Is it, is it simply sticking true to those original, those original values and that original vision? I think uh, it had a lot to do with it. Uh, the business had started and uh, we listed uh, the, the, the reason for listing was uh, kind of naive and, and very much genuine. The intention was not uh, to make money, uh, and, and as such, we, we stuck to our principles. We were reasonably prudent in our ventures. Uh, we, we managed our, our finances well, and, uh, and I think that's what kept us going. We didn't venture into the, the bleeding age of, of technology as it was at the time. You also, traditionally, I mean, if we look over the, the 14, 15 years, you, you have never really moved and, and bet very large or, or very big on a new technology that comes along. I think, for instance, about cloud, you now have a cloud offering. But three, four years ago, when, when it was bleeding edge, you didn't uh, rush out and spend millions and millions of rands on it. I think that uh, we've been around, uh, as you said, from uh, the beginning of the, the technology era, so, so to speak. And, uh, and as such, we've we always been the second to come into, into play. We would uh, observe uh, what happens, what works, and then, uh, and then join uh, pretty much early, but not being first. I think it's a, a risky business. A lot of people burn their fingers. And we've always acknowledged that we are a listed company. We deal with other people's money and other people investment and uh, we have to be prudent in, in how we manage we can't uh, just have a good gut feel about certain thing technology space area and then jump into it uh, betting the house on it also the as the house gets bigger and bigger uh, it pays you less and less to bet the house on it so so i think the philosophy will continue to be applied in your age in the future just looking at what you've what you've said about the success of the business um over the past uh, decade and a half you have put it down to luck um in 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 uh, past interviews is it as simple as that no it's uh, obviously not as simple as that uh, but uh, just as a philosophy on life uh, we plan and we have our five-year and ten-year plans, etc. And the reality is that uh, we can only control something like, I don't know, 20, 25, 30 percent of what happens around us. The rest uh, happens for, for, for reasons that we're not in, we're not in control. As such, uh, no one can, can uh, say it's all up to me, it's all up, up for what I do. It, obviously, the other 70 percent uh, play a role. And why we call it luck is because they have to, 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 to go in your way, the other 70%, for you to succeed. There are 
thousands and I don't know tens of thousands of great people, great businessmen that uh, kind of didn't make it mm. or didn't make it the way they deserved to make it. And, and the reason is that the other seventy percent didn't go their way. They had the thirty percent, uh, but the seventy percent just didn't go their way. Going back to that very first idea you had uh, late at night, the the original idea for Year H, have you have you stayed true to that? Uh, just about hundred uh, percent. I think uh, the the philosophy, the value system, at the time uh, before Year H started, uh, we drew a little picture of what will be the offerings, the services, uh, what market uh, will address. And the same little picture is still there and uh, in all our analyst presentations, kind of 30 of them, we see the same old pictures because that's the philosophy, that's what the business stands for. Uh, we have another uh, piece of paper that was written before you had started, what we call the work-life constitution. And that really tries to, to, to explain to our own people uh, what value system we, we strive for, what are we aim for, what culture and what's the purpose of the business. And that piece of paper still valid uh, once a month when we, we have new people joining us, uh, stand and talk about this uh, piece of paper that, uh, that we had. So, yeah, we, we stay true to, to, to the original thinking. As far as the balance between work and life goes, um, we hear a lot uh, in – in today's times, very busy, uh, often we get distracted with uh, work, get immersed in work, and we forget about the rest of life. Uh, is it difficult to to sell that idea to, to your people and to sell that idea internally? I think uh, the, just talk about it. And again, we, we talk to, to people that uh, join us uh, and yesterday was another another group that joined us, and we always talk to them about uh, this aspect of of the, the the personal life, the private life versus the business life, the work, the career we have. And what we always say is that none of the two should be subservient to the other. I think we all should strive to to enjoy and have fun in the work that we do in our career. And we always say that nobody is that bad to deserve to have a job they don't like or they don't enjoy. And at the same time, uh, to when we finish work, to, to have the same uh, excitement uh, in going home and enjoying our, our loved ones, enjoying our personal life, our hobbies, etc. And if that's what uh, called the balanced life, then we believe in it. And we don't believe in it just in, in kind, of kind of talking about it, but we we also practice it in, in real life. In UH, UH, we work hard. But we never uh, overdo it. Uh, you never, I wouldn't call a meeting on a Saturday, and I don't think I've ever did in, in 15 years of, of business or, or, or Sunday per se. There are urgent stuff that happen here and there, but as we plan it, we, we, we respect uh, our, our, our other life besides our career. We should be subservient to it. How do, you, how do you balance your life? Do you find yourself sitting awake late at night checking email, or is that a, a no-no? I think uh, I'm reasonably lucky that, generally speaking, I don't stay awake at night uh, because of business. Uh, if, if I have a worry, I would sit, kind of write a couple of notes and deal with it as opposed to deal with it while I'm lying. I do stay awake at night sometimes waiting for my uh, 20-something son to, to come back from jolling, and that will keep me up, but uh, not work. And the way I manage it is, uh, is that... Uh, you have to deal with things, and I think the same as any other aspect of life. You have, to, If you've got an issue, you worry about something, sit down, think about it. And I always recommend to, 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 to my colleagues to write it down. Write down those thoughts as opposed to you sort of lying anxious at night, worried that you wouldn't remember those thoughts in the morning. Write them down and you'll sleep much better. Aside from business-specific matters uh, and aside from waiting for your son to come home at night, is there anything – about our country, about the world, about the fragile nature of, of the world economy at the moment that, that keeps you awake or that, that worries you? I think it's not, it's not worry, but uh, as a business in general, you, one, one obviously uh, are very much aware of what's happening around us. And, uh, and uh, we spend a lot of thoughts inside the business, obviously on a personal 
on a personal level. And, uh, and our view uh, is that uh, the world is changing. The whole, I think, uh, economical system in the world is, is really transforming to uh, nobody kind of knows to, to where it's going to land. But one very dominant aspect of it, and, and we try and, and already leave it, is that the business or capitalism is, is received. The, the, the enterprises must participate in society much, much wider than just kind of making money for, for a shareholders or some old lady who's, who's got some pension fund the money sitting somewhere. Uh, a business uh, should take responsibility, and specifically in South Africa. Uh, you find it more acute in, in developing countries, but also in the in the, the, the Western world. Uh, businesses will, will find themselves needing to, to, to really play a, a wider part in, in human developments, in people, in social aspects of, of society. The notion that government uh, takes care of everything and business is just there to, to maximize and just make money for a shareholder it just doesn't doesn't work well. Uh, it creates a, a lot of uh, a lot of gaps in in society that uh, we're already seeing here. So we try in EOH and, and already leave it. We we write it in our first slide of every presentation that uh, EOH has got a purpose, and the purpose is to 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 enhance society, bring knowledge, bring technology, bring skills, develop people. Uh, create employment, etc. Uh, so, so, uh, and I think it's 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 valid not just a uh, just kind of do good uh, feeling, but I think uh, that's how society should function. All businesses should should actually look around them as opposed to just look at their income statement and balance sheet. And uh, and the the funny part is that I think it would do good for businesses. The businesses will, will do better. If their uh, thinking is, is is wider than uh, than just their own uh, their own pockets, uh, yeah, I think we try and talk about it in the business, and uh, I think that our own people respond respond well for it and would want to work for a business that uh, that thinks wider, that uh, takes responsibility for 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 the environment and the community we live in. One of those areas where you are making a difference and you have lived it um, is the job creation initiative. Uh, we've spoken about it a number of times. We spoke about it 18 months ago. We spoke about it very recently uh, when you released your financial results. Is unemployment, specifically youth unemployment, the, the biggest issue facing South Africa right now? I think uh, it is. If, you, if you're really from a, a social structure, and we see it from our own experiences now. I think the, the last 18 months have been a, a, a really a eye-opener for us. Uh, we took the initiative 18 months ago, not knowing exactly what we're going to do about it, but uh, the initiative was to, to, to work with our customers and business partners, other business partners, to, to see what can business uh, do to, to create jobs. And it actually connects to the previous question in terms of the role of, of business in society. And uh, that initiative came from the, the, our thinking that uh, jobs will only be created by business. Uh, in fact, government, should, we believe, should, should be more effective, more efficient, and not be the employer. Uh, government will run out of money if it's the only uh, place that employs in South Africa. Uh, so we took this initiative and we focused uh, specifically on youth, uh, youth unemployment. And to that effect, we, we ourselves uh, uh, took 620 young uh, university, college, uh, technical graduates, as well as uh, school leavers, high school leavers, about half, half, uh, 300 uh, each. And uh, we took them for a year-long uh, uh, programs uh, inside the business. Uh, at the time, we were, I think, uh, 4,500 people, so the 600 was kind of 13, 14% of our workforce, and we took them and we put them around the business, uh, you know, through through a variety of schemes, which I must admit the government is, is very helpful and very encouraging and supportive financially of those initiatives. And it was an eye-opener. Uh, we took these 600 kids 
And now it's, it's a bit more than a year after we've employed already 400 of them permanently. And our full-time employees of the business with full salaries and all, all that comes with it. And the 200, we're still working with them to, to place them elsewhere or to put them on, on uh, renewed, uh, renewed programs. And the experience is that uh, to see the, the evolution that those kids go, uh, if you give them the opportunity to spend a year in the real world, the real business, give them pride, get up every morning, dress up, try and look good, and go out there, uh, work, uh, earn some money, and feel good about yourself, about your environment and society. And those are, are will be uh, 600 great citizens of the country contributing. And uh, we always say that uh, we talk a lot about the education system, that it's got a lot of shortcomings. But those kids, given the opportunity, will uh, will rise up, even if the background education system is not perfect, and, and will do good. And uh, our people in the business are so chuffed with those youngsters. It's uh, it's amazing, and you see them, you know, all over the all over the place, and uh, you know that they come from because of their age. Mm. You kind of guess that uh, they were part of the internship. And what we're saying is that if all businesses will take up this challenge, and each of them will take few percent of their workforce as interns or learnerships we can really uh, uh, make a huge a huge dent in the youth unemployment uh, process and i think it's good for business we've got new people in the business we don't have to hire them they're, they're, we can shape them to to the way we want them to be we can train them and develop them as opposed to uh, uh, train them to un and undo things that they came with and uh, i think it's a cost-effective for the business, it does good to society, they contribute, uh, they, they will con be consumers of the future, which will make our economy bigger. So I really think if I, if I, I, w I had any power, I would legislate uh, uh, for it, uh, that, that, that organizations uh, should, uh, should uh, bring as part of the system. By the way, f I don't know, 40, 50, 60 years ago, that's how economies grew. Every youngster went to some kind of a learnership, some kind of a, a intern somewhere. That's how the system works. I don't know why it was kind of lost in, in the system. It's the right way. So if you, were, uh, uh, if you had two kids as, as a father, you will go to the plumber next door and you say, please, there is my kid. I want him to work with you. Don't pay him much, etc." And that's how, how people grew, how they, how they achieved the how they develop skills, etc. So I think uh, it's still 100% valid as it was 50 or 60 years ago. Asher, your own background, you were born in Morocco, raised in Israel, you came to South Africa in your late 20s, uh, an industrial engineer by training, uh, and uh, before EOH you came to IT from a manufacturing and logistics background. What about that background do you think has helped make EOH and make your tenure as chief executive as, as successful as it has been? I think uh, probably it's a lot to do with the, the, the word experience. I think, uh, and we see it often in, in startups, etc., that you have young people with great ideas starting great businesses, etc., uh, and often at a certain size of the business, uh, the need for understanding how larger corporation, larger businesses function is kind of uh, in short supply and people uh, stumble. Uh, what happened in, in my case, and just fortunate, is that uh, I was in large business. I did run manufacturing, uh, etc., factories, and, uh, and as such, that experience uh, kind of uh, that I brought with me, uh, I had I had it in me that when the business will grow, I will know how how large business function, what are the, the drivers of, of large business, uh, what are the processes that required, what are the different functions, how does it work, how does money work, how does the human capital work. And I think it did uh, that experience, uh, did, uh, I did use it, and I must have used it in, in the growth of, of UH. But uh, I think uh, probably the one experience that I brought with me 
is uh, not to be scared to, to hire people who are better than you. Yeah, so you get the best people, and it's still one of the philosophies of, of UH. Uh, get uh, the best people you can get, and if they are better than you, it's even better. And give them the space to, to, to function, to operate. Give them the, the freedom to do. They, they, uh, if they are good people, then never, never disappoint. <laughs> That's what my experience if they're not, that they might. But if you give space to good people, they will usually, usually come uh, come true and, uh, and 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 deliver. And that's what the UH today is about. You get a lot of great people. Uh, we try and push responsibility as low as possible in the in the business. Uh, give people the space. And then UH today is probably uh, what I will call uh, uh, made up of. Uh, Corporate entrepreneurs is uh, people who are entrepreneurs in nature, but uh, having the the capacity, the resources, the power of a large enterprise to do greater things that are much greater than they would have done had they been entrepreneur functioning of a garage. And and that's what we we do. UH, we we kind of get the benefit of both. We, we want the character who, who, who wouldn't mind to, 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 to work from a garage and start a business, but we bring them into the organization, give them the, give them the, 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 the backing of size, dimensions, balance sheet, money, etc., to do and do things uh, bigger and quicker than they would have done had they been in a garage. So the business model still is as such, and I see it going into the future still, a co- made up of, of a lot of corporate entrepreneurs who, who, who runs parts, who take responsibility, ownership, and, uh, and do it for themselves, for their uh, fulfillment, and obviously for, for the benefit of, of, of the whole. Ash, a final question, and I'll ask all our guests in Upper Echelon this uh, question. What motivates you? I think uh, it's, it's a complex question that uh, often uh, people ask themselves. Okay, we, we, we're not always 100% sure. Am I here? Am I here to make money? Am I here to, to build something? Am I here for legacy when I go that I leave something great? And I think it's probably a combination, a combination of, of all. What probably, uh, if you still have to, to, to pick something, is to, to, to build, to create. Uh, I always say that uh, we, businessmen, uh, are those guys who had no other talent. We couldn't uh, really uh, uh, play music. We couldn't uh, uh, draw pictures nicely. We couldn't uh, write poetry. But we still wanted to express ourselves. And, uh, and doing business is the way we... Uh, the way uh, those that can't do the art uh, express themselves, and uh, yeah, so we build things, we design them, we we kind of shape them, and and that's uh, how we, we express ourselves. Asha, it's been an absolute pleasure. Asha Bobot, Chief Executive of EOH.